Aloha. Uh, out here in the papaya field. It's uh, March 28th, 2017. And uh, I just want to share with you, I just, I just harvested a few fruits and I just want to share with you kind of some of the issues looking at the fruit itself. So when you're looking at a fruit like this, all the um, white speckles and stuff on there makes it a rejected fruit. Also the size of the fruit is not fully um, as big, nice teardrop, the thing that uh, people want to see in the store. This is definitely a second fruit. So uh, something like this could be turned into a ferment or a juice or some other secondary item, but uh, is not marketable. So if I look at majority of the things that I harvested um, here, welcome to my work truck. and. Um, a lot of them have this fungus on it so I got small fruit and I got this which is a number of issues which is basically related to the fact that it's also early in the harvest season so these trees are only a year old and they're just coming into fruit maturation so it's not like I'm expecting too much anyway most of the early fruit is kind of you know it's like uh, early uh, you know anything like that um, just doesn't size up the way it does when it gets mature and going but even this one here you see this little uh, divot there that's another fungal issue that somehow something started to eat it and the skin did not develop properly on there and so I got some spots um, the other thing I noticed uh, on this fruit here this one's pretty hemel look at that got nice sunburn or spots or whatever it is but then look at the tip there's also some uh, mealy bug in there. Uh, and so that would probably also cause a problem, although I believe when they're sold commercially, they're put through a dip and kind of um, got that stuff out of there. Um, also, you can see on the bottom of this fruit, a little bit of spray issue. So the spray not completely dripping off. So a little bit of that. Um, but getting nice fruit out of here, you know, this is edible for me. Give it to my friends, um, maybe some people that support me through uh, online crowdfunding, try and hook them up with some fruit. And then this fruit I found out in the field, it was already gone to way past, you know, I missed it somehow in earlier harvesting and bugs started to eat it, made some holes in it. Another sign that it's just not in optimal health, you know, still some uh, white fungal issues on there um, and as you can see I'm picking the fruit actually uh, what they consider in the industry like quarter ripe so majority of the fruit green just a bit of yellow showing um, and I hope to eventually pick it about half ripe before when I'm starting to get it to market but something like this like three quarter ripe um, you know on the tree the longer I leave it on the tree the more um, you know, chance it has for disease issue because as the fruit gets bigger it grows exponentially and if the good microbes aren't on there the bad guys also, you know, the fruit just has more area to protect and so that's usually why in the industry they pick it quarter ripe but you know look at this guy this is you know almost unmarketable I could maybe sell it as some organic because people are used to substandard produce coming from organic you know not picture perfect not eating with their eyes but eating with their tongue and their their mindset and their idea of the next seven generations and what they want to put in their body in terms of health but that's no excuse you know in natural farming it should be healthy and it should be visually appealing and you know it should taste really good it should it should appeal to all of your senses because um you know it, these are high quality methods so as I begin to transition this field over just giving you a kind of a picture of what I'm harvesting right now coming out of the field um, you know pretty spotty not that great looking stuff a lot of seconds I harvested about this much from the entire field over the last two days I just harvested a few more that I saw in the front section but majority of these were harvested the other day gave away three or four of them the nice bigger ones to friends um, but I, I am getting some sizable things you know this is a comparison to the size of my head you know 
Um, they are coming out pretty sizable, but still kind of off shape. Like if you see this guy, it's not quite the right teardrop shape. It's still looking a little wank. And um, you know, I I'm, so I'm striving for picture perfect produce coming out of here, and um, I will get there. I tell you. Um, even look at this guy, this little tiny guy, you know, smaller than my hand kind of thing. Bet you this guy's delicious, but just unmarketable at this point. So I'm working on it. And uh, so today I'm here in the field. Uh, got my sweet set up here. Got, got my hose, but also got my, uh, my still. Going to put the blade on. Going to go cut some grass in the back of the field so I can again put more mulch and make the plants happy give the microbes a place to live and uh so thanks for watching um see you later aloha okay so here in the back of the field and you can see just in a couple of weeks this grass has gotten pretty tall here um growing up so it's about perfect time for me to chop and drop it for mulch. I'm not really cutting it to clear it. Again, I'm cutting it so that I can add more mulch to these rows right here and put a little bit more mulch down. The thicker I build that layer, if I get it nice and thick, the mycelium is going to go all throughout it and really start being able to dissolve the rock beneath and providing great nutrition for the trees without me having to do much else. And that's the way a natural system works. So the grass here you can see much longer versus the grass behind me in this row. Ah, I mean, it just grows so fast out here, but this is about a cut about a week, week to two weeks later. So this half is what I'll cut the following week. And then the following week I'll be in Korea. And so it won't get cut. Um, and then when I get back, I'll probably cut this and the front row. Um, we'll see. I'm going to try to really manage this, this plot with the rest of my life going on too. So see what I get done but today uh, I just want to show you before I start I'm gonna start cutting this part of the field here this row here was actually just cut uh, just the other day because I didn't do this road row um, so but working over here on this part of the field today and uh, we'll see if I can get an after shot too depending on my time okay a lot hey so finished cutting this field knocked all the grass in this field in these rows down so what I'm gonna do is wait for it to uh, dry out for a day or two which uh, really only takes about a day out here and then uh, come back rake it over to mulch but uh, the entire back section of the fields cut or mulched I think it took me from 11 to 1 so about two hours out here uh, Listen to some hip hop, listen to some medicine for the people. You know, what a gorgeous day. No longer raining. The sun is blazing. Whoo! Fired up, baby. Transition this industry. Get it growing, Pono. Mahalo Nui for watching. I'll see you when I see you. Aloha. One more, one more addition today. You know, uh, when you go to eat your food, and you bought it at the store and you have no idea who grew it. Uh, I don't know if you can see my thumb here. The flesh. It got ripped off the back of this while I was weed back in this field. I just want you to know that uh, the farmer that grew your food may have spilled some, definitely some sweat, maybe some blood, and uh, hopefully not any tears. Tears of sadness anyway, just tears of joy that uh, farming is such a noble profession and that we're able to do it for you and provide food to nourish you and your family. Um, but it's the real deal, you know, uh, out here where you're, uh, you know, giving it, giving it all for uh, not just money, but for the people that are going to eat your food, that you get to empower them to continue in their life, to do their mission, their kuleana, uh, enrich the people in their life you know that everything everyone does uh, it all starts with agriculture and it all s and the people you know you can just hunt and well you can just gather basically hunt and gather and do wild the wild thing um or you can cultivate these these produce 
in a way that makes sense for humanity to work together. Um, but just realize, uh, you know, it's, it's more than just the dollar bill. It's, uh, it's someone's livelihood and someone giving all their effort to bring that food to you. So, uh, you know, it's real. Allah. <laughs>